Ford has a long and distinguished history in the world of Formula One racing. The company was one of the first to join the sport in the 1960s and has been involved in some iconic races. Now, after being absent from the sport for almost 20 years, the company has announced that they are returning to the F1. Join us as we look into the real reason why Ford, after 20 years, is joining F1 again. Before we continue, it's important to know why this is such a big deal. Ford probably isn't the first name that comes to mind when you think of Formula One, especially if you're under 40. After all, the last time Ford had a connection to Formula One was almost two decades ago in 2004. And at the time, the team's name was Jaguar. Although Ferrari and Mercedes continue to produce the two most successful engines in F1, the Blue Oval has a long and illustrious history in the sport. Beginning with the 1967 season, Ford-powered cars accumulated 174 F1 Grand Prix victories, 10 F1 Constructors' Championships, and 13 Drivers' Championships. Many of those achievements were made possible by Ford's tight collaboration with Lotus and its engine partner Cosworth Racing, with whom it co-created the now-famous Ford Cosworth DFV V8 engine. Several F1 single-season records still belong to the Ford Cosworth DFV. In both 1969 and 1973, a DFV engine won every single Grand Prix. The DFV engine also won 22 successive races across 1972, 73, and 1974, setting a record for the most victories in a row. Also during Ford's involvement in the sport, some of F1's most famous drivers raced to series championships and won numerous victories with Ford Power. Jackie Stewart won three driver's titles, Emerson Fittipaldi, two, Graham Hill, one, Mario Andretti, one, Nelson Piquet, one, and Michael Schumacher, one. Ford eventually switched to a turbo engine at the end of the 1980s, and although the company could not repeat its success with the DFV, there were noteworthy events during this time. These include the 1994 Drivers' Championship that Michael Schumacher won with Benetton Ford, although Williams Renault won the Constructors' Championship that year, and the 1995 Constructors' Championship that Red Bull Sauber Ford finished sixth in. And now, after a lot of speculations that Ford might be throwing its hat back into the ring, it has announced that it will be partnering with reigning Formula One World Championship team Red Bull Racing and will return to the series in a new partnership dubbed Red Bull Ford Powertrains. This deal would put the legendary Blue Oval back on the F1 grid starting in 2026, but its participation in the sport will remain a step short of the likes of Mercedes, Ferrari, Renault, and 2026 newcomers Audi. Red Bull has made no secret of its ambition to collaborate with the significant OEM since establishing its powertrain section in 2021. The team decided to take matters into its own hands, and commit to building its own engines for the upcoming set of F1 power unit regulations in 2026 due to uncertainty over the future presence of current engine supplier Honda in the sport. It was a big stride forward for a team that traditionally relied on engine partners like Honda and Renault for one of the most expensive but also performance critical components of the car. If necessary, Red Bull would go it alone to ensure it secured its power unit future for 2026 but it was also aware of the sheer size and cost of embarking on the project without the backing of a major car manufacturer. Red Bull came close to a deal with Porsche in its search for a power unit partner, but the German manufacturer demanded shares and control over the team in exchange, which Red Bull was unwilling to give up. Red Bull team principal Christian Horner said, It's a very different relationship to what was discussed with Porsche. This is purely a commercial and technical deal, so there's no exchange of any shares or participation within the business. This is a straightforward agreement and will allow Red Bull to share and access R&D, particularly on the EV side, as well as cell technology, software development, and so on. Also, on the commercial side, with Ford being so prevalent in the US, the deal will help Red Bull achieve even more penetration in that market. So, why is Ford doing this? What's in it for them? Ford's decision to rejoin the Formula One grid in the coming years makes sense for two reasons, both of which the manufacturer emphasized when the decision was made public. The reasons are sustainability and the sport's continuous growth and appeal. Regarding the first point, F1 released a visionary sustainability strategy in 2019 that was built on three main pillars, 
First, Formula One declared that it would offer 100% sustainable fuels by 2030 in order to achieve net zero carbon. Second, F1 wanted to make a lasting difference wherever it competed. And finally, F1 pledged to take action to break down obstacles, develop talent and inspire change in order to create a more diverse and inclusive sport. Due to potential changes in F1 regulations, the next generation of F1 vehicles to hit the track will use significantly less energy and achieve net zero exhaust CO2 emissions as part of this endeavor. The next F1 cars will use entirely sustainable fuel, which means that no new fossil carbon will be burned. Instead, carbon will be generated from non-food sources like municipal waste or even out of the atmosphere. They will also have three times the electric power as F1 moves away from the current internal combustion engines to a far more powerful electric component. This plays well into Ford's plans as the company estimates that by 2030, over half of its global car fleet will be all electric, and it has heavily invested in this technology. In 2021, the manufacturer revealed its plans for Blue Oval City and said that it would be a huge Tennessee complex that would manufacture the newest electric F-Series pickup trucks as well as cutting-edge batteries. The company also announced Oval SK Battery Park, another future complex to be built in central Kentucky consisting of twin battery plants that will power a new lineup of Ford and Lincoln EVs. Ford is also working to satisfy increased consumer demand and produce an annual run rate of 600,000 electric vehicles globally by the end of this year and 2 million internationally by the end of 2026 as part of its Ford Plus plan. Another reason Ford might be doing this is the continued growth in popularity of F1 both around the world and especially in the United States. Ford's decision to rejoin the grid makes a lot of commercial sense at a time when the sport is seeing explosive growth in the US. In an interview with Fox Business, Ford CEO Jim Farley said, We're building 2 million units of electric vehicle capacity. We haven't built this much since the 1920s, so we have to promote these vehicles to a new generation of customers. Farley also said, The sport is exploding in America. Three races, a lot of young, diverse customers, and that's who we want to sell EVs to. And so it makes sense that Ford picked Red Bull because why not? With Verstappen at their side, Red Bull is one of the biggest names and top drivers in the F1. Verstappen won the Drivers' Championship for the second consecutive year, and the team won the Constructors' Championship for the first time since the 2013 campaign. This deal with Red Bull offers Ford a route back to Formula One at a time when the sport is thriving without needing a significant financial investment in an F1-specific facility. Also, it gives the company a significant place in the industry and given Red Bull's recent success in Formula One, a clear path to championship success. The contract with Red Bull also expires in 2030, giving Ford time to weigh the advantages of its involvement in Formula One while providing a smooth exit in the event that its priorities change. Speaking to ESPN, Jim Farley said, we really did our homework and we wanted to be very practical in our approach. We didn't want to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to do an engine program or even more to own a team. He also said, what we've learned over all those years of being in Formula One is Christian's really good at what he does. And in 2026, we can help with the battery, the engine and the battery control software. Ford will gain access to motorsports ultimate R&D playground, where it will be able to develop its electric vehicle technology by contributing expertise to Red Bull's F1 engine's hybrid element. The electric element of the power unit will produce 50% of an F1 car's power under the 2026 regulations, making it an even more significant battleground for manufacturers. What do you think about this new development? Let us know in the comments section. If you've watched until now, thank you very much. Please. Consider subscribing to Velocity for more videos about EVs, Tesla, Ford, and the latest car news.